Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the April 2024 regular meeting of the Oak Hills Park Authority. Um, we're going to kick things off. I'll call to order with attendance, and I'll just do a roll call of the authority members present, then the staff members present, and then anyone else present. Um, and so I'll go in the order that I see them on my screen. Authority members present are Gary Leeds, here. Denise Brown, the treasurer, Alan Dutton, the vice chair, Rich Dellinger, and Jen McAllister. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a quorum and can conduct business. Staff members present are Paul Alexander, the golf pro, Mark Gartner, the controller, Jim Shell, the superintendent, and Jim Holiday, the general manager. And other folks present are John Lloyd from Odin's, um, the brand new opened restaurant at Oak Hills. Indeed, woohoo indeed. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks everybody for joining. Um, we'll move on. Uh, I think uh, let's get a motion. The agenda says acceptance of minutes just from the 321 meeting. We also had a 48 special meeting. Um, and so I will make a motion. Those minutes we'll discuss. But do I have a second for both minutes? So moved. So uh, any opposed, I suppose. Hearing none, let's go in. Um, the only thing that I saw was on the March 21st minutes. Okay. Um, it was about staff versus other. Jim Holiday, Paul Alexander, Jim Shell should be moved up into the staff line. Um, Jerry Travis, other. And then going through um, the summaries, I, I thought everything was pretty good. Um, so I didn't really see any adjustments to make, but I'll open it up for anybody else. Um, okay. Two minutes. Um, and then on the 4-8, I saw nothing that needed changing. Great. Did anyone see anything on 4-8? Oh. Okay. So uh, let's then go to approval. Uh, I'll just do voice vote. One um, thing on uh, the 4-8, uh, Joe. Corey Rich. I just noticed my uh, name had one L to Ellinger, so if you could put the second L in the uh, the uh, name, that would be good. That's that's true. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, so in the attendance on the 4-8 minutes, uh, there should be two L's right next to each other in Dellinger under attendance. Yeah, that's it. Um, so uh, any opposed to uh, approving these minutes with the amendments noted? Any abstain? Okay, then they're passed. And Marsh, you can pass along those notes. <clears throat> um, next up is public comment, I believe. And just clicking through participants. I see one attendee, it's Charlie Brennan. Um, Charlie, if you'd like to make any public comment, would you raise your hand and then Jim can promote you to speaking? Give me a second. Okay, I don't see a hand raised. So I think we can move on from public comment and close it. And next up is item four, report of the chair. So um, I think the most impactful thing is that after we met on 4-8, uh, Attorney Avery readjusted the language in the license agreement with Odin's to expressly um, exclude um, alcohol sales from the and um, that was signed by me last Friday and also signed by Joran. I got the chance to meet Joran, John briefly on Friday. Um, and so that is, we consider that done and dusted. FYI, there was one thing that as I read it more closely, didn't make sense to me, um, which was as we discussed it, 
there was a line removed saying um, it, it had said in the original verbiage um, excluding uh, beverage cart sales and because alcohol was removed from the revenue share uh, the, the draft we reviewed got rid of that phrase but as I thought about the logic of it, if you just move the pieces around, if you don't expressly include it, there's other things sold through the beverage cart, like candy bars, Gatorade, et cetera. And, you know, we've always said beverage cart is their domain. They get the revenue from that. It's not shared. So you do kind of have to expressly exclude sales from the beverage cart. You're kind of double excluding um, any alcohol sales, but that's fine. It's truly excluded. So we made that little change. It really doesn't change the, the concept of the, um, agreement. So, um, that's what we ended up executing. And then the percentages were also changed accordingly to adjust for, um, doing revenue net of alcohol sales. So, um, that's all done and we'll get an update today, uh, about progress there. Uh, everything's open and, um, we'll, we'll get to, Get the inside scoop. Uh, and then I know it's spring. We've got the reports from uh, the managers about how things are shaping up to get into later spring and summer. So I'm excited for that. Um, so I'll close the chair's report with that. And we can move on to those management reports. And we'll start with uh, Paul. OK, thank you, Joe. Uh, well, April is here. And the golf season has begun. Uh, tees and greens are all open, uh, but carts have been restricted to the path until maybe yesterday due to all the rain we've had uh, in the last many weeks. Uh, the course is open at 7 a.m. during the week and 6.30 on the weekends. Close time is 5.40. We'll move to 5.50 next week. And the, weather, the weather's really been mediocre at best. It's really been a kind of a slow start to the golf season. But when the sun is out, and the temperatures are over 50 degrees, we are very busy no matter what day it is. Uh, we've seen some huge numbers on Monday and two of the Tuesdays recently. So there's some days that are seem like a weekend here. But uh, presently, we have 32 people on the golf staff. Uh, and most of the staff works three shifts a week, composed of six hours a day. We've just hired two great individuals for the golf shop, and we have two more coming on board. Due to the fact that I have and will lose five college age great staff members who have been with me for years and they're basically getting older, moving on to other endeavors in life and seeking out some uh, internships. Uh, we've also hired three new outside operations staff members as well. And I think it's going to be a good thing for our golf staff, our golf shop, because we're going to have some adults in there and they're very reliable and, you know, they're really uh, going to be there a lot. Not as much going on in their life, I don't think, as some of the younger staff. So that should be helpful. But um, 52 annual passes have been sold this year. We have 685 golf memberships have been sold as of January 1. Uh, the 2024 outings have all been sent out. We have 18 events on the books, seven more open dates. Our first outing is April 29th. There's a chance we might add one more. Uh, some good news is we did have Golf Now representatives come on uh, Tuesday, two of them from Philly and Boston. They spent four hours with us and they were really, really helpful. They taught us a few things. We've ironed out some of the kinks and they're going to continue to help us here a little bit. Uh, so that was very good. Uh, men's opening day is May 5th. Uh, we have the golf shop stocked with about $100,000 worth of new merchandise. And uh, now that it is April 18th, we're really looking for the season to get going. Uh, we're going to get some better weather. We look forward to a busy spring, and I think we're going to really have a great 2024 golf season here at Oak Hills. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Paul. Any questions for Paul? Uh, Paul, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked into the um, the city of Norwalk offers a program where they um, have youths come and they disperse them around the city for different jobs for the summer? And I believe they pay, the city pays these young kids. Have you ever looked into that program? I've called somebody at the Carver Center before, and I didn't get a whole lot of feedback. And But I would love to do that. I mean, I I know a couple of the kids at Colonial Village across from Best Buy, and I really wanted to try to offer golf to maybe some underprivileged kids. And not only do they come up and play golf, but I wanted to tie in tennis, which I've done this in the past. 
Mm -hmm. and then show them what it's like to work, you know, show them around the job descriptions and have people explain what they do and, and uh, eventually even, you know, hire some of those kids. But I, th I think that'd be a great idea. And I'm, you know, willing to do anything I can for to promote junior golf, the lifeblood of the game. I'll see what I can find out if you're interested. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It'd be great. Okay. Paul, my only question was on the 52 season passes. I thought we limited to 50. It's not a big overage, but if there's a quick bullet on how we got to 52. I think that uh, we've had a lot of, uh, they're majority all unlimited. And because we don't have a whole lot of play sometimes during the week, uh, we, we basically sold a couple extra limited just during the week. Okay. I think the number is 52, though. Gotcha. And, and, just, uh, and it could it could be in our best interest to even maybe sell a couple more, but you know you know I think fifty two is good, but it's the majority all unlimited, meaning seven days a week. Yeah, and just 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 to to uh, follow up on that with what Paul just said, just to make sure everyone understands, just those extra two were limited only to Monday to Friday, so it won't impact uh, weekend play, uh, which is what some people uh, some some regular members are, are get frustrated with when we sell too many sure. passes. Sure. Okay, anything else? Great, uh, just for the minutes, uh, I wanted to note that authority member Robert Stowers joined at about 710 uh, for attendance. Um, and oh, by the way, uh, TJ Trimboli did message me a couple of minutes before the meeting. He said he's gonna be a little bit late, but he should be uh, joining later for the whole family. Um, then with that, we can move on. And next up is Jim Shell. All right. Um, course is doing fine. Uh, all of our major aeration is complete. Greens, tees, fairways, at least for the spring. Uh, we may end up doing some rough areas, which nobody will really notice. We'll probably do some approaches, which will be almost nothing. Uh, no disruption anyway. Um, we have had a lot of rain this spring. Uh, we had over 10 inches of rain in March. And, uh, as of now it's close to three and a half inches for April. And the normal for each of those months is, uh, just over four and a quarter inches. So we haven't exactly had, uh, the greatest weather to get ahead with golf rounds and with productivity on the course. But, uh, we're pecking away at it. Uh, we've done some drainage. We have some more that we'd like to do on 11, but uh, grass is starting to grow. Let's see, you know, how long our projects can uh, last here. Uh, we might get cut off by just getting busy with the golf course. Um, <clears throat> let's see, we're prepping the, finally, prepping the edges of the car paths that were paved uh, in the fall and, uh, those will be growing with seed fairly soon. Uh, irrigation system is up. No problems there other than the normal, you know, post winter repairs that need to be made. Uh, and labor I'm doing all right. I, I think that, uh, the new ad on indeed, which advertises a higher rate has gotten me some people, and they're better. Uh, it's this is like the first time I'm over a certain dollar amount, and it shows the people are are responding. And uh, I almost feel like I have my pick, but I'm still a couple short. So, but it's going well. So, and that's is, really is all this I have an to sorry, is this an amendment to your written report where you're down 120 hours and. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, it evolves every day. I mean, okay, yeah, I figured. Just, okay. just yesterday, I hired forty hours, and okay. uh, I have a couple more that are very interested. So let's see what happens with those guys, and we, I should be full up. I mean, within a week or two, which would be great. Yeah, good timing. Yeah. Any other questions for Jim? I just wanted to say that I had the opportunity to uh, visit with Jim, which is always a pleasure, of course, and also his his new assistant, Tiz, uh, yeah. from Zimbabwe. And um, 
which used to be called Rhodesia, actually, a northern one, certainly, if I remember correctly, from my youth. Um, and he's a charming guy, a uh, very nice chap. Um, and I, I'm glad to see he's getting involved. I think he's working on the nature area. Um, and uh, his wife hasn't joined him yet, but he, uh, she will be. She's uh, coming from Florida. Uh, but you get a chance to, uh, to see him driving around. Uh, he's a great guy, and he's a, he's a great uh, addition to us. Um, because I think he's a professional guy and I think he'll help Jim a lot. And I know Jim is going to help him a lot as well. Thank you. Yeah, he's been good. He's uh, he's on top of stuff and he's always happy. He's always got a good attitude and he's ready to work. And <laughs> he's always smiling, right, Jim? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Hey, Jim. He's a, good, uh, he's a good team guy. He really is. Quick, quick question on the uh, bun bunker uh, contract. Sure. Is that all put together? It is all put together. It's just a waiting game now. Right. Okay. When when would you start thinking about bidding out uh, the the remaining trap in the next season? Uh, probably about when the next project starts. Yeah. So sometime this fall, you wouldn't yeah. need to go out again. Yeah. Till then. Okay. Jim, I just have a question. Uh, actually, two questions. I was glad to see you're thinking about putting some trees in the north side of uh, the uh, the eleventh hole there. Um, yes. I don't know. Is 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 that new um, city uh, person, Sarah Cruz, the arborist, going to be any help, or, or is that something you're going to just handle pretty much by yourself? I'm going to run it by her because I I meet with the uh, I want to say what Robert, it's the IPM team. Uh, that we meet at City Hall the last Thursday of every month, and I believe that would be next week. And uh, I'll try to get like a sidebar discussion with her on stuff going on here, specifically on the mm -hmm. golf course. Oh, thanks. And and just secondly, I, in the next four weeks, I know the course are planned to be open the thirteenth of uh, May. I yep. suspect you're going to work some time to try to spruce up the tennis center. Yeah, uh, we've been keeping it fairly clean. I notice it does need a cut. I'm going to take down the uh, chains tomorrow so that there's access for all the people that want to uh, prep the building, whatever they feel they need to prep. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have one request uh, of the tennis uh, people. The garage is a disaster, and if they want me to turn on the water in the garage – Something has to be done. I'm not going to go in there again because I fell on my butt last time. You open the door and you'll see. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a mess. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's worse than my kids. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> Tennis balls? Yes. Yeah, they packed them in really flimsy bags. And terrible. They terrible. are everywhere. Yes, they are. So in order for me to get in there to do the water, I need something to happen in there. It's not Jim. Really I'll coordinate. I'll coordinate that with you, Jim. I mean, in other words, I will, I will cut a path for you. All right. Um, Jim, <clears throat> building on Gary's question. I mean, I guess we'll know more when we get to that time fall when the bunker project and, and other MT project begins. But I wonder, just keep in your mind at that point, if there's any advantage to maybe getting a little bit into that project, learning the realities of what's going on, and then going out for bid. I'm just, there might be, there might not be. We may think we, yeah, we have that, it all covered. That's fine. I mean, I, I don't expect the life of this coming fall the project happening this fall to be more than a month and a half. Mm -hmm. So that would leave plenty of time if, in case we want to refine anything or, or yeah. yeah, yeah, certainly. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we can move on then to report from the controller, Mark Gartner. Thanks, Jim. Right, thank you. Uh, I'll start off actually just by saying, Hey, Jim, um, in regard to uh, Sarah Cruz, you know, Robert had connected me with her, and thank you again for that, Robert. Uh, and she's already been here three times. 
And I got nothing but good things. She is absolutely fantastic. She's knowledgeable. And like, like you just said about Tiz, uh, great team player, really gung-ho and, and, and good to work with. So definitely, uh, if you want, I, I can even uh, introduce you guys at this point or, or whatever, because uh, I definitely recommend getting her advice. Thank you, Mark. I've, I've already met her several oh. times. Oh. And uh, it's a regular monthly meeting with the IPM team, and she's on it. Got it. So thank you, though. Okay, cool. You got it. Uh, yeah, I just have a couple of quick uh, uh, updates to my report. Um, number one, uh, I would say that Denise, Alan, and I are going to probably have some uh, some audit meetings shortly over the next few weeks. Um, and for the budget, uh, this week I've been able to move forward. Uh, 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 Jim Shell sent me his, his stuff, and uh, Paul, Jim Holiday, and I uh, all sat down on Wednesday <clears throat> to uh, – to get through all the Paul stuff. So we are in a good place. And next week I have no payroll, no month in close. So I've got <clears throat> practically nothing on my other than the daily stuff to do. So I'm going to, I plan on basically moving the budget along all the way to uh, getting it out for review. So everyone, uh, you know, Gary, Alan, Joe, and Denise, uh, probably by next Friday, you'll, you'll have it. So we can get, get to work on it. And that'll be, um, that'll be kind of concerned. Well, go ahead and finish your, your report. Sure. Uh, the only other thing is that, uh, you know, as both Paul and, and, and Jim already touched on, you know, this, the gloomy weather is definitely hurting, but you, I got to say Monday and Tuesday were just two beautiful days. And to have those days right after the master's weekend, I think that really got people out because we had, we pretty much had weekend in the summer money coming in uh it was for, for april on a monday and tuesday i don't think i've ever seen uh business that good so it was absolutely fantastic and we need a few more of those sunny days so hopefully uh coming up ahead and lastly uh you know as we've already discussed in the, the four of the four of the staff that's on here we've had staff meetings and you know my only concern is that you know we're doing well we're beating budget but our expenses are running high and there there are reasons for that right you know there, there was a there was a rise in um uh, minimum wage that came out in January that we did not budget for because it was not known. Uh, and in order to, um, you know, the work with getting Odin's in, there's been some some repairs and maintenance that were very necessary that Jim is over, Jim uh, Holiday has been overseeing, you know, repairing a dishwasher, getting this in, and then you have electrical stuff. So stuff that we certainly didn't plan on, which is why uh, when you do look at the report, uh, you'll see build, build, building maintenance has kind of like really jumped up this month. And that's the reason why. So I just want to make sure we're all just cognizant of, of keeping our expenses for the rest of the year, just keeping an eye on it. Um, so I'm not worried, but hopefully we'll get that revenue in also to cover the, the excess. Mark, how are we doing on the capital spending? Uh, we're still under. We should be. Uh, there's been a couple, uh, along with that repairs and maintenance, there's been a few items that I've capitalized. So uh, that we're not necessarily on, on the uh, CapEx budget, but we still have that, you know, reserve amount that, that it falls under. So I don't think there's any danger of us going over. And if it is, we're talking $1,000 on a $274,000 budget. So uh, I'm certainly not concerned. Just to uh, echo, uh, you know, Gary and Mark, I think I'll let the authority members know that when we come to the capital budget for next year, you know, obviously the big piece is the uh, the two hundred thousand dollar expense for the for the bunk, bunker project, which is a major project, which is which is in you know the major part of next year's capital budget. It doesn't leave a lot of money left. Obviously, we have money in for tennis, um, but it doesn't leave a lot left for other projects. So we, we can't expect to do a lot of other projects, um, you know, as well as the bunkers in this next upcoming fiscal year. And we do need money for, for contingency. We need to have like thirty, forty perhaps $50,000, you know, if you lose a, an air conditioning unit and stuff like that, we need to have money in contingency for that. So um, I think that's how the capital budget is going to look um, next year, you know, pending any emergencies. Yeah, that's one of the ones we've already completed. So that's uh, pretty, pretty much spot on. Yep. Okay. Um, but Mark, we do have, not that we want to do anything with it unless we have to, but there is the two investment accounts that we have that, um, if we feel we needed to tap on something, you know, portion of it for to to go forward with a project of the bunkers or whatever, at least that is there as a safeguard. Certainly, certainly, and yeah, yeah. If, especially if something uh, you know, like like Alan said, the H H HVAC unit or or something that is absolutely mandatory. If something happens in the middle of the year, we do have some older buildings and so forth. So uh, we will certainly have it. We'll just we'll go over budget, 
if we need to, but we do have we do have the cash reserves now. Mark, I think the first thing you said, um, I heard that you, Denise and Alan would be having audit meetings. Yeah, sorry if that wasn't clear. Yes, yeah, we'll be having uh, a couple of meetings over the next few weeks, I believe. I still have to talk with, with the three of us will talk offline, but yes. Uh, audit of what? Our annual financial audit. Oh. Was that not completed in? No, 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 for I'm... the upcoming year, for the upcoming year. So setting up. Budget, the I think you mean budget, not audit, right, sir, Mark? Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay. Budget. 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 Not audit. No, what I'm talking about the audit. Sorry. So the the upcoming audit, uh, we're just gonna we're gonna shop around a little bit, and we're gonna have a meeting. Uh, probably Denise and I will have a meeting with the partner at PKF O'Connor Davies, our current auditors as well. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm okay, sorry. Yeah. that makes sense. Yes. I was wondering if there was an open item from the the. I was the just audit. I was just testing okay. you to make sure you were listening. <clears throat> I was. Okay. Um, but my default setting is oh I probably made a mistake so I wanted to confirm. Um. And then, so V1 kind of of the budget will be distributed to a smaller group. We'll kind of test and stretch it. And then V2 will go out to the larger group for review in the May meeting. Does that seem like reasonable timing? Uh, possibly. Uh, yeah. I, let's, I, let's try to make that the goal. Yeah. And then we can, you know, discuss, debate. And if we see any changes that we think need to go through, we can have them ready to approve in the June meeting. So it can be effective July 1, right? Sure. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, shoot for that, that time. It would definitely be, would definitely be voted on at, at the latest would be the June meeting, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we need to vote on it in the May meeting, obviously. But we do want to have it in place approved and ready to go for July 1. So that would be the June meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mark? That means it's over to Jim Holiday. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to, to go through uh, my report. It's just full of lots of things that I do every day, and I'm happy to answer questions on any of those items. Uh, I, I would say that what's important at, at this stage uh, is um, I've been with you now for nine plus months. I haven't uh, started a golf season yet, um, but I'm I'm learning more every day and and uh, and spending time working with Mark, Jim, and and Paul individually uh, to learn more about what they do. Um, and I think my learning curve is fairly decent. I, I hope those guys wouldn't say he's out of his mind. Um, and, um, you know, besides all the little things, I think I'm able to, to contribute at least as a sounding board, uh, to my, to my mates. Um, and I'm, I'm, uh, like Paul said earlier, I'm really excited about, uh, the spring season. Um, and, uh, and, and it's been a, a, a pleasure working with John Lloyd, uh, and, and his staff, um, just to be around, um, the folks that he's hired and, and he and Marshall and, and uh, Lori, who's working in the halfway house and Chef Chris and Chef Kimberly. Um, we are optimistic that um, there'll be people eating in our dining room soon. Um, I can certainly say that uh, reports are from, from those folks that are um, getting a grab and go sandwich that they're all very pleased. Um, certainly, the staff is is uh, enjoying breakfast sandwiches there, and and perhaps lunch as well. Um, and uh, I'm just, uh, I think we're really on a good path. And I won't say any more. I'll let let John speak to that. But I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any I just had one question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Richard. Yeah, I just I saw your note about uh, you you uh, met with somebody from Efficient Light to review the uh, uh, EEV charging stations. How does that work, and where would you put them? I'm just curious. Uh, well, how how it works and where we put them. It, first of all, um, 
if we were to contemplate installing electric vehicle charging stations, we would be greatly enhanced by uh, rebates from the federal government and the state of Connecticut, um, number one. And number two, where they would go is um, the parking spaces uh, closest to Mark's office. Uh, there's a transformer just outside of, of uh, the administrative offices. And when you are contemplating um, an infra electrical infrastructure improvement, um, it has to be trenched. And so you're looking specifically for a location that uh, where the trench would be the shortest distance. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where they might be. Um, a coincidentally, or, or just to add on, um, Eversource was scheduled to install the new gas pipeline um, to convert the maintenance building today. They were put off by weather, but they'll be back very, very soon. Um, and I'm still waiting to hear if we're going to be eligible for um, additional uh, benefits from um, Eversource, the state, and the federal government. But we have to move ahead anyway, as, as you know, the, the furnace is, um, well, we don't want to go with the furnace, that same furnace for, for next winter. But anyway, so that's additional progress, just happens to be right. something that's being trenched. Thanks. Thank you. And Jim, is that in response to um, requests from park users, the EV chargers? No, that's just something. Uh, yeah. um, that I was approached on and I thought that it wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I think that we are going in that direction. Uh, in my previous um, position as a property manager for condominium associations, there was a lot of talk and nobody's pulled the trigger yet, but it's one of those things where when it does happen, the floodgates are going to open um, and more and more people will install uh, EV charging stations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jim, I just uh, I just put I just brought home a leased uh, EV car yesterday, so I'm, <laughs> I like congratulations. The, I like the idea of putting one in Oak Hills. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe uh, Mr. Leeds also uh, uses an electric vehicle. Gary, you're on mute. I think he's talking, but he's uh, he's forgetting to unmute himself. Um, well, didn't want any background noise. Um. Can you tell me how many units or or miles? I don't know. You know uh, how we want to define that. Would would you receive from this charger and per hour? That is all. At? There there are, there are lots of options, Gary. Uh, and um, I'm I'm also waiting to uh, receive a proposal from the same company which is a, uh, a licensee of, of Eversource to upgrade all of our lighting. And that would be a huge plus to the yeah. authority. Oh, so I'm yeah. not doing any, anything with the EVs um, until I get the proposal for the entire property. Uh, okay. But I'm, I'm, um, I'll be happy to share all that information. There's several options uh, right. for charging for EV stations. You probably have some experience with that. And I will... Uh, look to talking to you about it when and if we get anywhere close. Okay, and then the second thing I had, in your report, you said you attended a West Norwalk Associating meeting to talk about the restaurant. How did that go? Very well. They were extremely receptive. Uh, the president um, was very happy I attended, uh, passed out um, menus and they were very pleased. They said, thanks for coming. And we're really happy to hear that there's uh, a new restaurant in town. Okay, that anything you can do to promote it to the neighbors would be great. <laughs> yeah, John and I were talking about some additional efforts uh, today and uh, there will be, and we will do them. And and are we gonna talk later about the nature trails? Cause I see you walk the trails with Mark and Sarah. Um. Walk the trails with Mark and Sarah and um, a pretty large group, actually, um, along with David Beers, the uh, forester 
for the state of Connecticut uh, Western area. Um, he will most likely generate a report. So I would say, Mark, you may want to uh, jump in here, but I think that he will have a report that might be more valuable to share at the May meeting. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll address that at the uh, in the next section when, when there's the Nature Committee uh, uh, coming up. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, anything else for Jim? Great. Thanks, everybody. Um, so that means we can go into the next section, number six, uh, and we'll start with the Tennis Committee and Denise. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Um, so as um, was mentioned before, the courts are scheduled to open for May 13th. Um, hopefully we'll be on schedule. You know, we've had a lot of rain, so there hasn't been too much done with the uh, maintenance of the courts. I mean, they're slowly getting through. So I'm hoping that by the end of April, they get them done so that they can set for the next two weeks of May. Um, so that's on the agenda. And um, Rich and another volunteer um, have volunteered to uh, paint the pergola and we picked out a paint. And so I know that you have started, you sanded, you did some priming and um, I haven't actually had the a minute to go down and take a look, but thank you very much for taking that task. So. Uh, sure. That's something I guess you'll be completing as the weeks go on, which is great. Uh, we have a Friends of Tennis meeting tomorrow, so we'll discuss Arthur's Court and the um, plaque. Uh, we've, uh, the other volunteer, David, has made some headway in designing um, what he would like to put forward with what we wrote. So hopefully by tomorrow we can finalize the plaque and then finalize when we would have the um, uh you know, the uh, memorial for, for art. So I'm thinking hopefully sometime, maybe late May, early June, but it's to be determined at this point. Um, and as everybody knows that we did receive the go ahead for the USTA grant for the $23,750. So um, that's pretty much settled. Um, the supporters of Oak Hills will meet that amount of money, the $23,750 for a total of $47,500, which will be for the whole project. Um, we plan to do that in October because we don't have the time now to have that move forward. So uh, what we're hoping to do is after the USDA tournaments end in late October, we'll go ahead with that project. And I know that Jim Holiday has already been in touch with the Walsh Company, so... I uh, believe that that should be on the schedule. And um, I filed the documents with the city's grant department and Rita, I think her name is Negra, Negri. Um, she's one of the coordinators in the grant department with the city. She was just, you know, very pleased that we moved forward and she's uh, lended her hand if we need any assistance going forward. So, you know, happy about that. And I, Mark, I gave you a copy of everything, right? I think so, yeah. I did. Okay. Um, and that's kind of it for the moment. Um, I, I just had something I will, I will just mention, and it's not something that would be um, something that would happen now, but uh, we're in the fourth year of our lease with Kings Highway. It's a five-year lease. So this summer will be the fourth year. Next summer would be the fifth year. So I'm just looking ahead at, uh, you know, some different possibilities of what the tennis center could maybe develop into. Um, I'm thinking maybe in six months or so, I'd like to put a committee together and uh, talk about different things, pros and cons for uh, the possibility of Oak Hills actually uh, venturing into uh, running the tennis facility and all the, uh, you know, all the ups and downs and all the things that it would take to uh, move forward with something like that. So it's a long range plan. Um, and it's something that uh, we can talk about, you know, in the future a little bit more. Uh, it's just something I'm just putting out there on the table. Like Denise, that idea. Denise, should that be part of the long range planning that we're going to discuss later on? Well, I don't know, because I think that long range planning might be way long range. I'm not, you know, I, I do have a time frame that I've got this whole thing that if it was to happen, uh, it's a sequence of, you know, when the contract is over. 
So yeah. there is already a, a you know a term of what we're in right now. So that long range plan for old business, new business, I'm not quite sure what that involves and how far in the future that's going to be talked about. Yeah, yeah I, I think that takes a little bit of a longer view. So I think Denise, yeah, as part of the tennis committee, yeah, thinking about what the strategic approach is going to be for tennis and uh, other models is uh, within that realm and uh, happy to consult and lend any um, insight I have as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's sort of it for the report at the moment. If anybody has any questions. All right. Thanks so much, Denise. Thank you. Um, next up on the list is supporters. Uh, I don't see Jerry. Mark, I'm not sure if you have any insights there. No, there's been no activity. Okay. So we'll move on from supporters and go into the Nature Advisory Committee. And Mark, I think you indicated you were going to speak a little bit. Yeah, just off the top of my head, I'll just kind of, uh, you know, what, what Jim and Gary were talking about before. Um, yeah. Uh, Sara Cruz met with Jim and I a couple of weeks ago to do a, a walkthrough of the woods uh, to give her assessment. Uh, and then the three of us um, uh, met with David Beers and <laughs> a lot more than just that. Uh, Robert was there. Denise was there. Uh, Audrey, the former chair, uh, and, and several other new interested parties uh, who have ties to the Norwalk Land Trust and Norwalk Gardening Club and the Common Council. Uh, so it was a good good group. Uh, we walked through, and, and the good news is that there's no nothing majorly wrong there. There's there's several trees down, but it's just circle of life. Um, and uh, some of them are down across the path, making it difficult to walk. So we decided that was the first order of business is to, to clear them, and Jim Shell has very generously agreed to take a chainsaw and uh, get the portion that is lying across the path uh, to cut that out. And then we plan on using those stumps. If, it's, if they're not too rotted, we can use them as little tree stumps to, to kind of have little sitting areas throughout the woods. Um, and the only other issue that was, that is an issue is um, if there's one section that has quite a few strangling vines that are really like literally ripping down trees. Um, so we're going to try to get out there with some some tools and uh, and, and cut them off. But uh, and and just uh, sorry, there's also just in general the no the um, nature advisory committee has been invigorated and I guess uh, we're going to start up again because it's there's been pretty much no activity for the last nine months. So uh, with several new <coughs> members uh, who who were there Great. for that walk, so wonderful Good stuff. Okay, any questions for Mark on that? Um. Mark, did they also mention that there were some opportunities for grants for um, certain projects or, you know, I'm not sure what, because I yes, thank don't you know for what reminding grants. Me. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, they did say that, that uh, and I believe Audrey is, is uh, contacting both uh, Sarah and uh, David Beers uh, just to have something in writing to see where we can go for the next steps to look into that. Yeah, that'd be thank great. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mark, for stepping in. Sure. Uh, we can move into item number six, old business, new business. And up first, A, is um, the long range planning. Who wants to take the lead on setting this up? What's exactly involved in that, Joe? <laughs> I'm not sure what the agenda item is. I did not ask for this one to be added. But does anybody know what's involved in that? Well, well I, I asked for it to be added last time, and unfortunately, I wasn't here. So I guess the question was, way back in January, uh, TJ said he would chair it up, and subsequently, uh, he, he said he could not do that. So I'm just wondering where the long-range planning effort goes and whether we should crank that up in some way and... Uh, uh, and and do something with long range planning for the park. The, it, it's not just the golf course, but it it's the park itself. It includes you know tennis and uh, and the nature trails. I would think. And Denise, I like the way you keep raising uh, grant requests uh, as as a possible way of getting additional funds for the park. 
Um, I'm not sure, uh, you know, maybe the town could help with that type of stuff of identifying where grants could be obtained. But I, I certainly think we need to uh, crank up the long range planning for the park ultimately. I think that's uh, correct. Um, in the last meeting, uh, yes, I recounted that um, TJ uh, kind of stepped back and said he would like to kind of participate in the golf aspect of it, but not the broader thing. And so uh, there were a couple of facts that I kind of laid out. Well, quasi facts, uh, I suppose, better positioned as my opinions. Um, which are that I think the chair of that committee, uh, who's going to run the long range plan should be an authority member, uh, who can appoint members of the broader Norwalk community, um, to join the committee, but the chair really should be an authority member because we have a lot more context into the operations, um, of the multiple aspects of the park, because you're absolutely right. It's not just golf. It's how golf integrates with tennis and nature and the finances and the physical plant. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's comprehensive. Um, but, um, I'm, I'm not equipped to chair it. Uh, and also I'm not part of the long range, um, because my term and my term limits are, uh, up in June. Um, and so I thought it would be appropriate for the new chair to kick that off. Yeah, I kind of thought the same thing. I know with Joe leaving, um, I, I felt that, you know, and there's a couple, June is kind of a transition for several members. So it'd be nice to see if we had some new members, uh, whoever the new chair is. And it seemed to me that I, I don't mind volunteering to be part of it, but I, I think the majority of this is so much of it is golf. And I'm not, uh, that's not my expertise. I can help with tennis and maybe the park. But I kind of think it would be a good thing to do it by the end of June, try to get the committee together with when will we have the new uh, members um, on board. Mm -hmm. I, I think if I could just say once the, the <coughs> governance, you know, that the chair, the vice chair, the treasurer is set for, you know, moving forward. Um, and also <coughs> any, uh, any new members of the, you know, the committee, I think we're, are we too short at the moment, Joe? Or well, actually, well, you'll be stepping off, you'll be stepping down, right? And then... So um, we're one short anyway, I think. So there'll be two positions short. I don't know how many will be filled, um, you know, by the mayor, et cetera. But once that is done, then I think we can start to, you know, look as a group to see who, who's, you know, who, number one, who, who wants to head it up. I'd be interested from a historical point of view, um, what has happened in the past. I believe there was some studies done quite a long time ago, I think. 2015 seems to spring to mind. So I don't know what there is historically, but I think once... You know the governance you know is set then i think we can start to work on this committee i would think that's the way to go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it would be nice if we could pull up the report or whatever was put together 10 years ago to see you know what they were talking about and maybe what has been accomplished if anything and <laughs> what ideas that they had back then if anybody knows where that report would be that report's on the website, Denise. I pulled it off of it, so you can find it on the website under okay. the authority. Yeah, so it's available. All right. So have you had a chance to look at it? Yeah. 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 They wanted bocce courts on the tennis lawn, so. Oh, that's right. You did it because of that. <laughs> that sounds a little like old a, Italian who wanted that. Is that a no-go? <laughs> is, that, is that not... That's so long as they don't need grass, I, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Um, we have the oyster we, shells. We're talking about new members, that we have the potential to get some new members. I see on Jim's report that forwarded statements or qualifications for two potential nominees. So uh, to fill spots on the authority to the executive committee. So we have some candidates uh, for the for the. Uh, authority here i'd like to jump in there if i may um, um yes i did receive um uh, uh, Jim, just, just to pause just for a second okay. that that's actually item b on this agenda item are we 
closed with long range planning? Do we do we think it's a reasonable approach to say we'll get a new executive committee in place in the June meeting? We'll have hopefully not two empty seats. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, that executive committee can kind of spark up with the uh, with forming the long range planning committee. Does that does that seem reasonable to everyone? It's a little more delay, but you know, I think it makes sense. Makes yeah. sense to me. Mm -hmm. Jim, I'm so sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to close off that item and now we can pivot into uh, nominees in that process. Okay. So Jim, do you want Jim to continue his conversation? Yeah, yeah please. Well, I actually um, am unfamiliar with the process. And so uh, I uh, placed that item on the agenda without, uh, without anyone's knowledge because I wanna learn more about it. Um, I understand that it involves uh, the mayor. I understand that it involves the common council. Uh, and basically that's what I know. Um, sure. And so I'm kind of coming at it sort of backwards. So I, I think um, uh, it, it might be helpful if Joe gives us uh, some uh, some information about the process. Sure. So the way it has worked is um, we, I have worked with the city clerk, who is now Irene Dixon, to bring nominees to the mayor's attention. Uh, it has also come that they have brought forth nominees uh, who've been added to the authority. And um, then, you know, if there are some restrictions um, there, because they're political appointees, there are some state imposed uh, party restrictions. You're not allowed to have, I may be wrong about this, but you're not allowed to have more than six members of any declared party, uh, D or R. Uh, and then use and eyes un, um, um, unaffiliated and independents don't count towards those quotas. Um, so there are some uh, restrictions on that sort of thing, but otherwise the, the um, qualification is Norwalk resident. Um, and then the mayor would appoint to the common council, well, they recommend appointment to the common council and the common council at their next meeting would confirm. So it's really a fairly simple three-step process, kind of source, make sure that they actually fulfill the requirements that are set out by our charter. Then the mayor appoints and the common council confirms. So, so do we solicit or do anything to advertise that there are positions available on the authority? For example, uh, you know, with the men's and women's golf club, uh, golf associations, also with the uh, friends of tennis and the tennis association and that type of thing. Do we need a person from uh, to be represent the nature group? How do, how does all that work, Joe? I think it would be great and right to have uh, someone from nature, someone involved in the nature committee on the authority, yes. Um, we've spoken before with folks from that committee, but I understand there's some revitalization as Mark reported. So uh, it's, it's great to hear that and maybe we can source a, a member from there. Um, we've never really had that. We've never really had an authority member who's actively involved in the advisory, the nature advisory committee. So I think that would be great. And then I know there has been some historical solicitation with uh, the men's and women's um, clubs. And, um, you know, we've, I certainly, when I speak to people throughout the city, um, I do always push them to make recommendations if they know folks who are involved in any of the kind of pillars of the park as I think of them um, in that that sort of business or interested in it to uh, you know get the resume to me and, and let's let's see if we can work to get them on the uh, authority so you know it's kind of word of mouth it's kind of um, through connections but also yeah some of the channels that you've mentioned have also been explored uh, and ha have unfortunately not gotten that much out of them. 
Okay. Well, maybe we can talk to the land trust and the Norwalk gardeners and some other people and see if anyone would be interested. So. Gary, I think there is some interest. I believe there's been some talk at an informal level amongst the, those entities you spoke about, and uh, there may possibly be some uh, something working at this moment in time uh, to to have someone uh, you know from with a, a nature sensor you know uh, background who's familiar with what happens at the park. I think there are some things in the works. I believe. That'd be great if we got someone for related to nature to be on, because that would be helpful. Yep. But didn't we just receive two resumes to review? Um, yes. Jim, that you had sent around, correct? Yes, yeah, we did. I, okay. Yep. And one lady is a uh, nature... Uh, she has her, her background is with the nature conservatory. Mm -hmm. so. okay. you know, I have a, a little bit of a separate question. Sure. And that is, I remember maybe last year, some of the terms of the members that weren't renewed in a timely way or something like that. And I know yes. mine's coming up this, this one, June, it's in two months. And yours and I think TJ's, three of us. Yeah. So how does that work? How, and what what happens there in terms of? And I would like to see: can we get it? Make sure that, that we get it done um, in a in a little more timely fashion this year. This this year. Yes, um, that's uh, I, it's actually fairly prescient that um, Jim added this because this is a good reminder for me to work with Irene to uh, well first confirm with you and TJ that you'd like to be reconfirmed. Um, and then work with Irene to um, get that through the process. That, that's a lot simpler. It's a known quantity you've already been on. So um, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, and then also to work with her to um, ideate new members and, and pass along those, those profiles. Okay. So I'll, I'll jump on that. If we can just do one very quick little operational order of business, Rich, would you like to be reconfirmed to the authority? Not to put you on the spot in front of everyone. Oh no, he froze. <laughs> Silence means you. Now okay. look what you've done, Joe. <laughs> um, well, I'll confirm with Rich offline uh, and TJ. So, uh, any other questions on the um, nomination process and and all that? Okay, then we can move on to uh, the last item on the agenda. Well, the penultimate item on the agenda, which is the PS. It's uh, the restaurant update. John, welcome. Hi, guys. Yes, well, um, here we are. <laughs> 18 days in to, uh, to being open in some capacity. Um, it's been quite gratifying getting such a positive reception from everyone and very, very grateful for the support of um, the park authority and getting the kitchen uh, online and in shape. And um, yeah, I guess we spend a lot of time on a number of different things, uh, dealing with the formalities of getting the correct certification for the restaurant, wrangling with the fire department, building permits and uh, health department. But we are now in good standing with the with the city um uh, the lease revision has resulted in a rewriting uh, or reapplication for the for the liquor permit which we are i think 10 days into now and i'm afraid i don't have anything to report other than we check in uh, with the liquor liquor control on a daily basis and uh, i don't have any updates on how close we are to getting resolution there but we're positive that uh, we are we're in a good place in the queue and we'll be seen too quickly and there won't be any problems. But crossing my fingers that uh, we're not going to have to wait too much longer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some, some part of the business has been 
dealing with the legacy outings that we've inherited and going through all of those and getting an understanding of the outing culture at Oak Hills and uh, putting together our, our own kind of protocols and trying to balance the expectations of all the parties as well as uh, beginning to build some a book of business for future events uh, for pr private parties at uh, at the restaurant. Um, the kitchen is online. It's been open to, for two weeks now. We were open on April 1st, even though the weather uh, was uh, conspiring against us. Um, the halfway house has been open as well, and that has seen better business. Um, so I spent a lot of time interviewing, hiring, and training new staff, and optimizing uh, some of the operational side of, of, of the restaurant in terms of uh, getting new bits of equipment in. Happy to say that we uh, got, a, got a big smoker into the kitchen today, so um, we will be a, a bona fide <laughs> uh, barbecue operation um, uh, at, at Oak Hills and hopefully be uh, you know doing, providing some good and authentic food for, uh, for, for, for the customers. It's fantastic. Any questions for John? Hey, John. So John, so Derek, okay. go ahead. John, I haven't been around. Sorry. So maybe you've answered some of these questions in the past, but hi, Gary. Is as far as uh, uh, marketing and on the uh, carts and uh, ordering food from the golf course or but you know, before you get to the uh, halfway house or before you finish your round, uh, is there any thought going into uh, whether there'll be an app on our phones or anything like that? Or <laughs> having not played Richfield, I, I don't know what you do up there. Yeah, well, the technology is there for us and there's innumerable ways in which we can, we can uh, uh, elicit the business from customers, whether they order through third-party applications like DoorDash or Grubhub, whether they can order directly through our own websites, they'll be able to call their orders in. Uh, we're looking at integrating into the carts, uh, the, the screens on the carts. So at least, you know, getting our menus available on the screens there and maybe having the facility for, for golfers to order when they're in a hurry. Um, but yes, we're, we are looking at every avenue to uh, to, to receive orders and to, uh, to to managing the business that way. But it, for, the, for the time being, the best the best that we can do at the moment is just lots of uh, uh, old fashioned A frames, you know, positioned in prominent places, just letting people know that the restaurant is actually open and there is some food available there if they need it. Okay. Literal sandwich boards. Thank you. So, so John, if I just start off by saying it's it's a distinct push to have another English accent on the authority. Uh, obviously, <laughs> a, much, a much better one than mine as well. May I say, being as I've been over here a lot, of life, I I did travel very close to your town in uh, about a, two or three weeks ago. But it's a pleasure to have you guys on board here. Um, so, you, um, operational wise, obviously, you know, liquor licenses is, is pretty paramount. There's no getting away from it. Um, when all things being equal, you get a liquor license. When do you uh, anticipate opening up the restaurant, serving people there, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I think we're I think we're in good shape for May the first, and you know, I'd okay. I'd like to open sooner. Um, really, as soon as the weather is a bit more consistently positive and the the golf course is maybe a bit busier, um, then we will open up the restaurant and start hiring. Uh, front of house staff to um to help with table service but um we're, we're finding there is a there's a diminished interest when we don't have a fully stocked bar for for certainly for for people eating in the restaurant mm -hmm. and that's understandable it's a very early time in the season and uh we've still got a lot to do to uh to let people know who we are and what we have to offer yeah no, I understand. I mean, I would, I would put it to you, you know, the sooner you can open, the better, it, because then people are going to really know that you're there, uh, which they do already. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, this the license will come pretty soon, I'm sure. Because um, once you open up, I mean, the signage is great. And um, and the chef, great, met the chef, great guy, um, you know, so 
once you're up and running, it's going to be people are going to be so happy and so pleased. I think. Yeah, so yes, yeah, and we're we're not uh, uh, we're not going to slow slow down the opening at all. We're we're all guns blazing. We have food in the fridge, and uh, you know we have uh, we have high hopes for for doing for cooking a lot of good food and, and selling it to a lot of people. And we find that's that's surely going to be the best way to uh, to getting getting a positive a positive reaction from people. Thank you, John. John, uh, can you uh, the, the marketing part of it? Anything going to be going out in terms of uh, you know the news? Um, well, John, I mean, I, I'm sure we'll have the news blast going out, but anything beyond that, the Facebook or social media or anything else to announce the opening? Yes, I'm sure. You know, we have we have a distinct uh, social media presence for Oak Hills that we have yet to uh, to fully uh, engage with, um, but the. But we, you know, we have a social media uh, person on payroll, and um, that is certainly one of our priorities: is to to be, uh, you know, digitally marketing ourselves, uh, you know, quite aggressively uh, to um, to to let people know. Thanks. Great. Hey. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, love the progress. And actually, really excited to kind of go there, have a glass of wine and a great dinner. So, you know, I'm excited for May first, I suppose. Uh, yes. And keep us keep us um, posted naturally on the progress of the liquor license. That's that's obviously a, an item of interest. Any other Absolutely. questions for John? Um, John, are there tables on the patio yet? Um, yes. out, outside. So, I mean, if you do a grab and go, you can sit outside. Absolutely. And, yeah. and we have, we are serving customers inside the restaurant as well. Um, but it's, okay. it's in a sort of a takeout format on, right. you know, we're serving in on disposable, you know, little takeout boxes. Okay. So Denise, since you talked up, have you talked to John about servicing the tennis uh, area at all? Well, not yet. I mean, we will <laughs> for sure. We just, um, I mean, I, what I think would happen, John, is what's happened in the past is that, uh, the vendor Kings Highway who runs the tennis center will probably reach out to you and ask you, um, to supply, uh, we have three, um, let me see, there's Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in the mornings. We have three different sets of tennis matches that we supply, or it's been supplied in the past where there's just light fare for the tennis players after they get off the courts around 11 o'clock after they play their matches uh, with simple things like fruit and um, maybe small muffins or maybe juice and things like that. So, I mean, it's not up to me, but um, we would mentioned that you would possibly be able to um you know work out something with them and uh, oh for sure yeah we'd love to help that. love to it, it's love a to meet. 12 week season and it's something yeah. that uh, would be three mornings a week yeah so that, that's how it's set up and so that would be something that uh besides just regular getting the tennis people aware of your facility and you know using the facility and stuff like that yeah well, I look forward to meeting her and and seeing uh, seeing how we can help. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks so much, John. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next couple of meetings. Um, so, with that, I think we have reached the end of the agenda, and so we just need to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, Rich Dellinger. I'll second. Any opposed? Nope. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Not tonight. Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, pleasure, as always, everybody. Thank you so much for your Thank engagement. You. Good night, Thanks, John. John. Thanks, Jeff. See you soon. Thank Be you. Well. Have a Thank good you. night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.